All right, my name is Jonathan, and my talk is going to be on WebRTC. So this is uh, the agenda. Um, I'm going to talk about what is WebRTC, what does it do, uh, how it works, and what's going on behind the scenes. I'm going to talk about some of the challenges that this new technology faces, and why it's useful to learn and use WebRTC. So what is WebRTC? It stands for Web Real-Time Communication. Uh, it's basically a, a collection of APIs that allows direct connection between browsers. Uh, and this allows them to exchange files, information, any type of data. So looking at this, right, direct connection between browsers, it sort of sounds familiar, right? Like WebSockets, but not really. So the keyword here is direct, as you can see. <laughs> So for WebSockets, it's, uh, what happens is there's a connection or communication between only the, uh, the client and the server. Uh, there's a lot of things going on in between, but that's irrelevant right now. Um, if a client wants something, it makes a request to the server, and the server responds. It says, okay, sure, we're connected now. Uh, if there are multiple clients, the same thing. They make multiple requests, server responds to all of it. And since it's a socket, it looks more like that. Uh, so now the client doesn't need to keep making requests every time it's looking for something. So if one of the client changes something or makes an update, let's say they type in text or upload a file, it sends it to the server, the server processes uh, the information and immediately pushes the update to all of the other clients. And what this process does is that it, there's actually a sort of delay, right? So between the sending client and the server and the server processing all of the information, these two clients on the right will have to sort of just sit there and wait. Normally this isn't a big issue, it's, it's probably only a second at most, but this is a huge issue if it comes down to uh, voice chat or live streaming where one second can change a lot of things. So let's take a look at WebRTC. So with WebRTC, the clients can actually directly communicate with each other and completely bypass the server. So this decreases the latency by a lot because now it doesn't have to, the, the receiving client does not have to wait for the sending client to the server and then the server to itself. So let's, let's really take a look at this and try to understand what this means. Right? So normally a client is really just a browser. It's HTML and it makes requests to the server and it waits for a response so that it can update itself and have uh, and contain new information. But with WebRTC, this changes fundamentally the way we think of browsers because now browsers can communicate to each other without the server. So how do these clients even know about each other? How does it know uh, which client is it connected to? If you haven't noticed, uh, it's at the title, it says signaling. So that's how it knows. So let me give you guys an example. Uh, this is a server and its clients. So client A would signal to the server like, and say something along the lines of, hey, I need to talk to client B. Here's my information. The server will then take that to client B and say, hey, client A wants to talk to you. Do you accept? And client B says, sure, here's my information. The server then takes that back to client A and says, okay, this is client B's information. It accepted the connection. And it, uh, it starts the connection between the two clients. And with this, cli uh, with this connection, the client A can now directly talk to client B, and the server will know nothing about it. <laughs> so how does this work? And what information is client A and B sending to the server and receiving. So this is sort of what happens behind the scenes. First, of course, everything goes through the API. So the developer uh, interacts with the API. The client and server uses this API to set up the connection. Then there's identifying the client, right? So how does uh, the server know this is the client and it's not just someone pretending to be the client? Then there's the type of data that it's sending over. Is it uh, video? Is it voice chat? Is it just some random files, what, what's being sent over. 
Then there's NAT traversal. So NAT stands for Network Address Translation, and that alone can be a tech talk or five. So I won't, I won't go too deep into it. Basically what it is, is uh, it's a technique that establishes a connection between the clients. It's commonly used in peer-to-peer -peer, uh, sharing and transferring. And uh, it transfers sort of like metadata from the browser, such as uh, browser information, IP addresses, ports, and many, many more. Then there's security. So identity is already sort of like a type of security, but this type of security is about encryption. So when data is being sent over and transferred over, WebRTC automatically encrypts any type of data. So that way, if someone were to somehow listen in into this transfer of data, they won't be able to obtain any useful information. Finally, it's codec. So this just determines how the data is going to be compressed and sent over. So WebRTC sounds great, right? I mean, it allows communication, direct communication. Uh, why did we learn about WebSockets then? Why isn't this used more often? Why isn't it used everywhere? Well, WebRTC uses UDP. So this in itself isn't really an issue, but this type of protocol, uh, UDP isn't reliable for transferring important data. So it's, all it does is it sends data really, really quickly. It just constantly sends data, but it doesn't check whether or not the data is being received. So this could be useful for something like video, um, video chat because you can lose a few frames and it's not going to be noticeable. But if a file being transferred loses a few bytes of data, the entire file could be corrupted. Another challenge is that WebRTC does not have any standard signaling protocol. So all the different developers, different companies will have their own methods of uh, implementing different protocols. And lastly, it's not compatible with all of the browsers. Popular browsers such as Chrome, Firefox, and Opera is fully supported. No plugins needed. It just works straight out. Um, but other browsers such as uh, Microsoft's Edge and Apple's Safari require external plugins so that WebRTC can sometimes work. And if you're using Internet Explorer, I mean, I'm assuming you don't care for updated technology, so that doesn't matter. <laughs> Why WebRTC then? So with WebSockets, live streaming is possible. Uh, but as, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the streaming is way too slow, and there's a very noticeable latency, very, no very noticeable lag. But with WebRTC, streaming can be much quicker. And this allows, or, or rather, this makes it so that we have no need for extra apps, such as Skype, or even Zoom, or Vent, or whatever people use these days. All of these can be done directly from the web browser. And companies such as Google and Facebook already implement this technology in their chat services. Uh, WebRTC is embedded in web technologies. So since there's already a connection between client to client, the server does not need to use any more resource to process uh, incoming data and then transfer it over. So what this allows is that um, now this company or this server can just say, okay, here's the connection, you guys deal with it. And basically, they don't have to waste any resources, but they're giving their client extra features. And there are many, many development kits, tools, and open source libraries that can give us as developers uh, many new interfaces. Uh, WebRTC also solves many security issues because encryption is mandatory for all WebRTC components, and since it's not a plugin or an extra app, it runs inside of the browser's sandbox without creating a new process. So no spyware, malware, or anything can get into your system. And also, um, since it's, it's using your browser security, uh, camera and microphone access has to be granted explicitly. So that way, you know, you won't just, sh your face won't show up on someone else's computer by accident. So lastly, WebRTC is still a pretty new tool for the browser, but it has a lot of potential. As its name states, 
for real-time communications. So if you guys want to learn more, you can go directly to uh, WebRTC's website, or you can check out um, on YouTube, Google I.O., just type in WebRTC 2013. Thank you.